Hey Precalculus, so today in class we worked on solving trig equations and I just wanted to make sure we got a couple of examples down in our notes. Um, so for the first one, if I'm going to solve this for x, I'm going to start by taking away 1 from both sides. I get 2 sine of x equals negative 1. And then I would divide both sides by 2. And I get sine of x equals a negative half. And now, to get x by itself, I need to get rid of this sine, and the way that I cancel out a sine function is with its inverse. So I'm going to take the sine inverse of both sides. That's going to cancel out the sine, and I get x equals the sine inverse of a half. Now, to figure out where sine inverse is of a half, I think on my unit circle, okay, I know sine is how much I go up or down, which means I've gone up a half. So as far as the unit circle goes, that's going to be root 3 over 2 comma a half. That's where the sine value is a half. And it's also going to happen over here in the second quadrant um, where I went back root 3 over 2 and up a half. Okay. So since I went over more than I went up, I know this happens at 30 degrees and at 150 degrees because I go 30 away from 180. So that tells me that x equals 30 degrees or x equals 150 degrees. The thing about the unit circle though is I could keep going around the unit circle. 30 degrees gives me sine of a half, or sorry, sine of 30 gives me a half, but so does 390 degrees. If I went all the way around the circle and then I went 30 more, I'd be at 390. Sine of 390 is also a half. If I went all the way around twice, 720 plus another 30, I'd be at 750. Okay, that also gives me a half. And same thing with 150. I can keep going around the unit circle. So what you say is 30 degrees plus or minus 360 degrees K. And this K represents any number. So basically it's like saying you can go around the unit circle as many times as you want. And then if you go another 30, that's going to give you your answer. It's going to be a half. Same thing here, 150. I can go around the circle as many times as I want. And then if I go 150 more, that's going to put me to a place where sine is a half. Another way of thinking about the same thing is you could think about this as a graph. So if I were to graph y equals 2 sine of x plus 1. Let's see. Uh, I know the period of the sine curve is 2 pi or 360. I know the amplitude of the sine curve is 2 and it's been shifted up. 1. So if I were to graph this, my midline is going to be shifted up 1. My amplitude is up 2, so I start at my midline, I would go up 2, come back to the midline, I would go down 2, back up to the midline, and it would follow its wave. And this wave would go on forever and ever in both directions. And what's happening is when this thing is equal to zero is when it, it's hitting y equals zero or when it's hitting the y axis, or sorry, the x axis. So right here, that's x equals 30. Oh, is it x equals 30 degrees? That doesn't quite look right. Did I graph it correctly? I went up one. It's a sine curve. Hmm, I'm not very convinced that that is 30 degrees, but I don't have time to redo this video. Hmm, in theory, that should be 30, and that should be 150. And that should be the next one, and that should be the next one. What am I doing wrong? Am I doing anything wrong? Um, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys think about this, and if somebody can tell me either that I'm right or tell me what I'm doing wrong, the first person that comes and tells me tomorrow, I'm going to give an extra mulligan to because I don't really have time to redo this video. So you guys figure it out. Either I'm correct, and that's 30 and that's 150, and my graph is just confusing me momentarily, or I've done something wrong, in which case whoever comes and tells me first whether it's right or whether can tell me what's wrong, extra mulligan tomorrow. Sound good? All right. 
Anyway, that's the idea. That's why we have repeated solutions is because every time it hits the x-axis, we're getting another answer. Okay. All right, moving on because I have a limited amount of time here. Um, if you see a problem like this with cosine of x times parentheses sine squared x minus 1 equals 0, it's kind of like a little mini two-part problem. Because of the zero product property, I can split this up and say cosine of x equals 0 and sine squared x minus 1 equals 0. And then you're going to treat it like a little two-part problem. So cosine of x equals 0 when we've gone over nothing. So that happens at uh, 90 degrees and at 270. So you would say 90 degrees plus or minus 360K and 270 degrees plus or minus 360K. Another way to write this same answer though, you could write it in a more condensed format. Notice that at 90 degrees, if I rotate 180, it puts me at 270. And if I go another 180, it puts me back up at 90. So I could write this answer, these two separate answers together by saying 90 degrees plus or minus 180 degrees K. And that would be my answer for my cosine. And then for my sine, I'm gonna add one to both sides. So I have sine squared X equals one. I'm gonna square root both sides. And now you have to be careful. If you square root in a problem, we have to recall that you have to put the plus or minus there. And the square root of one is obviously one. So here we're looking for a couple of answers. We're looking for both sine equals one and sine equals negative one. So let's see, sine is one at, oh, over zero up one, so at 90 degrees. And sine is negative one at 270. And so it turns out that the answer to this problem is exactly the same as the answer to cosine of x equals zero. And so we can just write it as one answer and we only have to write it once. All right, that's it for notes today. Um, I will be here at 7.30 tomorrow morning, and whoever gets to me first on example number one gets that extra mulligan. All right, have a good night, guys, and I'll see you in the morning.